Today's lesson is on properties of parallelograms, so let's start with the definition. A quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel is called a parallelogram. And you will often see me abbreviate this, see the symbol for parallel. So I'll make the symbol and then I'll put parallelogram beside it. Another thing that you'll see is let's say for instance, let's go down here. If I were looking at this parallelogram PQRS, PQRS, oftentimes they'll just put a little parallelogram symbol in front of that to indicate that it is a parallelogram. So a couple of different ways to use symbology to represent a parallelogram. Okay, so in addition to the definition, we got several theorems here. So let's dive into those. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. And you can see that marked here in the diagram. PQ is congruent to SR and PS is congruent to QR. Opposite sides are congruent. All right, theorem number two related to parallelograms. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. Theorem number three, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles or adjacent angles, I guess you could also call them, are supplementary. And why do we know this to be true? Well, think about it this way, guys. This one is kind of easy to remember if you remember your properties of parallel lines or your theorems about parallel lines. Let's say that PQ is parallel to SR, and we know that's true because of the definition of, of parallelograms. And then if we let PS be our transversal, Right, then we can see that angle P and angle S are consecutive interior angles. So therefore, that's why consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. Okay, next theorem. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. That's not to say the diagonals are congruent because as you can see here in this picture, PQRS, this parallelogram, Diagonal PR is definitely much longer than diagonal QS, but the, the diagonals do bisect each other. All right, and the last theorem that we have for, for today, it's not really about parallelograms, but it's included in here because you have to use this theorem to prove some of the parallelogram theorems. So I'm just going to tell you what it says, and then we really won't spend that much time using this theorem. It says if three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, then they cut off congruent segments on every transversal. So, so here's the if part, and we can see that I've got parallel three parallel lines, A, B, C, D, and E, F, and they cut off congruent segments A, C, and C, E. And so since I know that to be true, then I know on the other transversal, these two segments are congruent as well. BD is congruent to DF. That's all that theorem says. And like I said, we won't be really using that one. We're going to use the theorems related to parallelograms. Okay, so now that we've learned all that, we've just got some practice problems. So let's just hit it. All right, STUV is a parallelogram. Find TU. So I'm going to highlight that here in red. I'm looking for TU and WT. Here's WT. And then it says justify your reasoning. Okay, well, TU, TU is the opposite side of SV. And remember the theorem that tells me opposite sides, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. So I know that TU is going to equal 12 because it's congruent to SV. All right, and I know that WT is going to be 14, right, because the diagonals bisect each other, which would mean that this is congruent to that, and therefore their lengths would be the same. Okay, what about the next one? JKLM is a 
parallelogram, find the measure of angle L. Well, what did we learn in the theorem on the previous page about consecutive angles? They're supplementary. So the measure of angle L is going to be 180 minus 135, which is going to be 45 degrees. Alrighty. Okay. All right, the next one here says ABCD is a parallelogram. Find the value of X. Well, what do we know about opposite angles? We know opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. So 9X plus 2 equals 12X minus 34. Solve for X. We'll get negative 3X equals negative 36. So X equals 12. All right, find the measure of angle D, the value of Y. Oh, got to find all these things. Measure of angle D, Y, value of X, and EH. Okay, so a lot of things here. Okay, well, let's see here. Um, okay, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on, but this is what I think. I think they're telling me that the measure of angle EFG is 50 degrees. I, I think that's that whole angle down there, not just that little piece. And I think the measure of angle DGF is 7x plus 4. I guess we'll see soon enough when we try to use substitution and solve that, whether that makes sense or not. So if that's the case, if I, if I do have those labeled correctly, then what do I know about those two angles? Well, I know they're supplementary. So I know that 50 plus 7x plus 4 is 180. So 7x is going to be 180 minus 54, which would be 126. Hopefully 7 goes into 126. 156. Oh, yes. Oh, whoops. Sorry, that's not 56, that's 7. I, I was getting ahead of myself. This is where the 56 is, and then that goes into that 8 times. So x is 18, so good, good. So there's x. So that makes the measure of angle D, uh, well, let's see. Well, the measure of angle D is going to be 50, right? Because opposite angles are congruent. So I'll put that over here. The measure of angle D is 50 degrees. And I got X. So I got that. I got that. I need to find the value of Y. Okay. Where, oh, Y is on the side length. Right here is Y. So I know those two side. These two here are congruent. So 6Y minus 9 equals 21. 6y is 30, so y is going to be 5. Now all I need is the length of EH. Well, look, HG is 8 units long. I know the diagonals bisect each other, so EH is going to also be 8 units long. Okay, that's how we use those theorems to help us solve these problems. Okay, let's do this one. I, I, I would stop you here and ask you to do this one, but this one requires a system of equations, so I'm going to help you do it. All right, let's see what we know. We want to find the lengths of the diagonals. Okay, let's look at LN. Let's look at diagonal LN, and they do tell us this is a parallelogram, so we know that those two diagonals bisect each other. So what do we know? We know that x equals y plus 2, and if we look at diagonal KM, we know that y plus 10 equals 2x minus 8. So, hmm, two variables, but that's okay because I got two equations too, right? So what are we going to do? Remember, we got a couple of different options we can use for solving systems of equations. We can use substitution or we can use combination. We could also graph, but I don't think we want to graph here. Which one of those is going to be our best option? for solving for x and y. Clearly, I hope it's pretty clear, it's going to be substitution, right? Oops, shouldn't have done that. Let me rewrite that. x equals y plus 2. OK, 
Okay, and since this is already solved for one of my variables, I'm going to just use substitution and I'm going to plug y plus 2 right here in for x. So let's rewrite this second equation, y plus 10 equals 2 times y plus 2 minus 8. All right, y plus 10 is 2y plus 4 minus 8. So now let me start collecting like terms. y minus 2y is negative y. And if I combine these two, I get negative 4. So negative 4 minus 10 is going to be negative 14. So if I haven't messed up here, I think y is 14. Okay, if y is 14, then I'm going to plug that right up here into this equation, and I'm going to get that x is 16. And now let me just plug this into, into diagonal km. I, you know, I plugged it into the first equation, so I know it works there. Let's make sure that y plus 10 does equal to x minus 8. So if y is 14, that's 24. If x is 16, that's 32 minus 8, 24. So that checks out, so it looks like we're all good. x and y, x is 16, y is 14. And as I mentioned, you know, graphing is a way to solve a system of equations. And when you graph, if you graph these two lines, they would intersect at this point, 16, 14, right? So if I had a graph here, and I was way out here at 16 and up here at 14. Whatever these lines look like, I don't know, but that's where they would intersect. Okay? All right, last thing we got to do is a proof. It's been a little while since we did, it. we did a proof, so this is pretty exciting. If you want to pause here and try to do this one yourself, just to make sure you haven't forgotten now, feel free to do that, and then you can start the video back up and check to see how you did. Okay, let's see, what do we know? We know that we got a parallelogram, A, B, C, D. That's given. And we're trying to prove that A, B is congruent to C, D, and B, C is congruent to, okay, so we're trying to prove this theorem that says opposite sides of the parallelogram are congruent. All right then. Well, let's see, what do we know? We know we got a parallelogram, so by the definition, we know that BC is parallel to AD, and AB is parallel to DC. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that as my first step. I mean, maybe that's not what I need, but I can't really think of any other statement to make. So let's start with that and see if it takes us down a path we need to be on. BC is parallel to AD and AB is parallel to DC. And that's the definition of parallelogram. If a quadrilateral has two pairs of opposite sides parallel, it is a parallelogram. Definition of parallelogram. Okay, now how's that going to help us? Well, maybe we need to stop here and think about how are we going to prove that those opposite sides of that parallelogram are congruent to each other? Hmm, I think it's got something to do with triangles, right? I think what I'm going to have to do is prove that the two triangles in my figure are congruent to each other, and then those will be corresponding parts. Right, so let's think about how are we going to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other? Well, I can see that they share a side, so maybe, well, I don't want to write that just yet. Let me do this. Let me, how about angle one? Let's start here and look at angle one. Let me get, grab a different color. What do we know about angle one? Well, we know that it's congruent to angle four, right? Angle one is congruent to angle four. And we also know that three is congruent to two. And how do we know that? Oh, because of the alternate interior angles theorem. Right, parallel lines cut by transversal 
alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay. All right, so now I've got two angles in each triangle. So now I'm going to say that side that is shared between those two triangles is congruent to itself. And I can see that I'm going to have to say it this way. AC is congruent to CA because when I write the order of the triangles, you'll see why that makes sense. And of course, when we say something is congruent to itself, that's the reflexive property. Okay, so that gets it for me. Ooh, I've just about run out of room here. It's a good thing I'm almost done. So what do I know? I know triangle A, B, C is congruent to A, B. Angle A, this angle here corresponds to this one, so it's going to be CDA. Triangle CDA. And that'd be angle side angle. congruence theorem. And then finally, I have my pairs of corresponding sides. AB is congruent to CD. And BC is congruent to DA. And that's because they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles and they're congruent. So that's our lesson on properties of parallelograms. The next lesson, which you're also going to listen to today, is proving quadrilaterals are parallelograms. So it's really going to be taking these theorems that we learned today and using the converse of those theorems in most cases to prove that quadrilaterals are parallelograms. See you next time.